Well, now the disability pension review that's left many Australian families distressed and on edge. For one South Australian woman who can't walk and can't even feed herself, she's been forced to prove she can't work. And as Leonie Davey reports, the shameful treatment could last for years. I don't want other families to have to go through what we're having to go through. Shirley Tyler is stressed and exhausted. I haven't been sleeping, because I'm just like, what happens if they do cut her off? Where she go? Who's going to look after her? We've got enough trauma, enough stress watching her the way she is now without having to undergo this as well. Shirley's daughter, Danielle, has a complex condition, an unknown type of leukodystrophy. It's a degenerative condition of the brain. We were originally told that if she lived to 25, that she'd be doing pretty well. She's now 28, so she's outlived her life expectancy. She's confined to a wheelchair. She needs two people to lift her in and out of bed. She needs someone to feed her. She needs to be showered, dressed. Everything needs to be done for her. At 16, Danielle was granted the Disability Support Pension, or DSP. She now lives as close as she can to her family in full-time supported accommodation in regional South Australia. But now Centrelink, the Department of Human Services, is demanding a medical review to determine Danielle's right to receive the disability support pension. They gave us 21 days from the date of the letter. It, the letter actually took 10 days to arrive. I actually live two and a half hours away, so I've had to do a lot of phone calls and try and organise doctor reports and speech therapist, physio, OT therapist, and get all current reports so that we can prove and provide evidence that she can't work. The letter requests documentation such as specialist medical reports, psychologist reports including IQ testing, and physical examination reports. They need current information about the diagnosis, treatment, symptoms, functional impact and prognosis of each of the medical conditions that impact the recipient's ability to work, all within 21 days, or risk having her meagre pension cut off. Andrew was 16 when he applied for the disability support pension and uh, the medical report in that form was completed by a professor of child developmental psychiatry. In Melbourne, David and Deb Johnson are facing the same DSP review demands to assess whether their 30-year-old son Andrew is disabled enough to be unable to work. A simple visit from the department would have been enough. He's got um, profound autism, a severe intellectual disability, and he has severe bipolar disorder and Tourette's, and he can't communicate, uh, he's non-verbal. There was never any question that he would have the capacity to work in any sense, whether supported or mainstream. It was never on the um, horizon. Andrew's older brother, Will, also receives the DSP. When they each went on the DSP, we were told that they would never have to be reviewed for the rest of their lives, and I just didn't expect it. It's an epic fail. Why are these DSP reviews going out to people who have severe disabilities? It's a fair question. The reforms seem fraught with problems and inconsistencies. Even trying to make sense of the assessment criteria on the Human Services website is confusing. Do you believe that Danielle is at risk of not meeting the eligibility criteria for the DSP? Definitely not. People who are frail and vulnerable, whether it's a mental health condition or a lived physical condition, they need to be supported by welfare, not penalised. South Australian Minister for Disabilities, Lisa Vlahos, also thinks it's unfair and says the department's record keeping is inept. However, many of the people who are being targeted with this reform are actually lifelong disabilities and, as you said, are degenerative conditions. Their lives will become tougher, not easier. So I think they've got a wrong criteria about who they're targeting. In some cases, it's because a person may have applied for a disability support pension 
a decade ago and those records have not been digitised and put onto our most up-to-date system. And so when we're going through and assessing the risk factors, that doesn't get picked up. Federal Minister for Human Services, Alan Tudge, thinks 21 days is ample time for families to gather supporting medical reports. In many cases it'll be as, as simple as going to their doctor and getting a certificate and informing us of that. For people like Danielle and Andrew and their families, this expectation is anything but simple. Check the client's file, have changed legislation so people like Danielle and other families don't have to go through this and suffer and it's like mark them as they don't need to be reviewed, they qualify, they're never going to be able to work. Stop the trauma to the families. <laughs>